This is The Wheel Weaves, a Wheel of Time podcast with no spoilers. Hey everyone, I'm your host Annie, and I'm the first time reader going through this series chapter by chapter. As always, there's no spoilers past the chapter we're covering, and that means it's totally safe for first time readers. I'm joined by my co-host Brett, who's a longtime fan, and he's guiding me on this journey. We'd like to thank and acknowledge our executive producers, Brandy Aaron Kirkwood, Sean McGuire, Yanis, Lifeline and Fool, Green Man, Davis Ferreira, Margaret, Big C, Bennett Williamson, Dylan C, Hannah Green, Neuralia, Jordan Gower, Jeff Searles, and Eric Reed. And we would just like to thank Grayson Ishara for increasing their pledge to become our newest executive producer. Thank you so much for joining our team and your continued support. We really, really appreciate it. And before we get into things today, we want to thank and welcome Julie Foster, Michael J. Fosh, and Caitlin Salfeld to the Wheel Weaves Patreon team. Thank you so much for your generosity and your support. We really, really, truly appreciate it. In this episode, we are talking about Chapter 1 of The Gathering Storm. Yeah, Chapter 1 is Tears from Steel. Ooh, yeah. So things are going poorly, and I don't know who's surprised about that. Is, <laughs> is it you? <laughs> poorly for whom? Everyone. Everyone involved. I don't think it's going poorly for Samarog. Actually, yeah. You know what? You're right. I think it's going pretty good for her. Yeah. I think it's also going pretty good for Cad Swain. Okay. Okay. Yep. Maybe. We'll mm-hmm. see. Okay. But mostly not great for everyone else. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Now, we've been avoiding this fun fact for just a couple... We have to get the traditional stats out of the way Mm -hmm. before we talk about this. Okay. But we got to talk about this one. And I mentioned it before to you, but we have to discuss the book cover of The Gathering Storm. Yeah. We got... There's things happening here. It's interesting. Yeah. And I noticed (laughs) Rand's stump of a hand is like conveniently covered up. It is. By it some is. scarf. So the funny thing is there is a provisional cover art. So like basically what they had before the official cover art like got made and put into the book. Yeah. And it's similar, but it's not quite the same. Does Rand have two hands? No. Oh. But he's facing the house. So you can see. Oh, you see his he's, butt. Well, you can see the lack of a hand. Oh, and that's like very obvious. Very obvious. It's uh-huh. not just like subtly draped over the stump. Right. So, and the woman is a little bit different too. Okay. But I actually, because obviously it's Rand on the cover there. You can see yeah, him it's Rand. shaking his fist at the sky or something. Uh-huh, yeah. Totally like a sane person would do. Yeah, you know, yes. shaking his hand at the clouds or something. Uh-huh. Like, go away. Yeah. <laughs> Go away. <laughs> Damn you, clouds. <laughs> Maybe at the wind, at the wind that oh, we get in this first chapter. Wind, yeah. <laughs> ah, that wind's evil. Uh, See? <laughs> well, it's weird wind. We'll, we'll talk about it when we get there. Who do you think the woman is, though? Yeah, I'm not sure. My instinct is Elaine, just because of the... Interesting. Okay. Hair. The hair. The, hair. the but dress. But she's not pregnant. Sure. That's not a pregnant sure. person. Okay. And the funny thing is, knowing I these mean, books, it could yeah, be anyone. It could be anyone. <laughs> With Rand, though... Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Take it take a stab at it. If it's not Elaine, who who might it be? I mean, it might be Avienda. Like who else has red hair? But that woman's in a dress and Avienda's not gonna be like I guess she did start wearing some dresses. Okay. Right? Is that your guess? Maybe. Okay. Yep. Okay. <laughs> okay, go I don't on. know what else you want from me here. Yeah, no, that's good. So it is officially it is Avienda. Oh, it's Avienda, okay. But the funny thing is I've also seen it I described. I would never picture Avienda actually looking like that. Oh, other for sure. than the hair color. Yeah. Which even that feels off. Even like the general like it's I don't know what it is, but it's like a lot of the women on the book covers have the generic like open mouth like what? What's that face? fantasy? Yeah, yeah. It's like almost romance romance novel esque. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, that looks more like Elaine would look in my head for sure. Like Avienda wouldn't look like this. See, I've also actually seen it in some places titled as Min. Which oh, I think is definitely wrong. A hundred percent. But anyways, wrong. and then if you flip it over, we also have a bunch of Saldean, Saldean sh- soldiers. Okay. You can tell by their helmets and everything. So they're, yeah. they're Saldean. And Saldean soldiers is just as hard to say as Shanchen soldiers. <laughs> turns exactly. Out. Yes. Yeah. Yep. And then we got some weird perspective stuff going on with the manor house in the background because it's like a little bit too small, but also how far away is it? I don't know. I don't know. But I found a funny little interview that was done by Brandon Sanderson. A couple months before the Gathering Storm came out. Okay. Yeah. About the cover. So uh, adjacent. Okay. Adjacent. 
So to paraphrase, he does say a few nice things about being a part of the Wheel of Time now in a very different way than he ever was, because before he was a fan, he'd binge the books and read them along with us. He'd reread the series sometimes, but I'm taking just a paragraph out of a pretty long interview, and he says, Actually, a lot of things about this project put me in a strange position. I've become the most direct face of the Wheel of Time with my blogging and appearances, because of that, I find myself by design being an advocate for the series rather than a commentator on the series. There's a distinction there. It's no longer my place, for instance, to offer criticism on the cover art. <laughs> so perhaps some would call it two-faced to me to avoid discussion of things in the series that perhaps deserve criticism. I just feel that it's my job to stand in Mr. Jordan's place as best I can and be respectful of his memory and the responsibility I've been given. Okay. So, yeah, but it's just funny because... Can't even critique the cover art. Can't do it. Nope. I feel like even Robert Jordan would be like, (laughs) what happened here? (laughs) What's going on? (laughs) Who's this supposed to be? Right. Yeah. (laughs) Who's to say? Okay. Well, we are going to jump into chapter one. Yes. Tears from Steel. And the chapter symbol is the dragon, which at first I'm a little confused about because we start out with the wind yeah, and stuff. Yeah, of course. And it's a while. It is. Before we actually get to our hero. It is a while. That's a, a good way to like put a, it. Like a while. Like, like while I was reading, I was like, what is several going pages. on here? When are we going to get to the fireworks factory? <laughs> And then when you're listening to the audiobook, it's like a 33 minute chapter Mm -hmm. and it's 10 minutes. Wow. Yeah, that actually makes sense. Before you get to rant. Yeah. So I was like, are we going to be at the White Tower and talking about rand are we gonna perspective switch to rand like how are we getting to rand i mean keep in mind this there was four years four years between oh the i books. know i know we so got to do some recap here. we really needed quite a bit of recap yeah so i'm gonna start out with some very very recap with where the wind has blown nice i love it it's okay. the start of a book it's the iconic first paragraph, the opening paragraph. I'm glad we didn't skip out on it. Yep. We made sure we got it here. And in case you are wondering, it has risen in a lot of places. This yeah. Wind. Go through this list. Okay. I'm, I'm interested. Do you remember any of them? Barely. This is one Should thing I- Should I quiz you? Yeah, I would fail because this is one of the things that I've never bothered you to memorize. You know the first one. I've never committed it to memory. You know the first one. You should know. I should Dragon Mount? I don't know. I can't remember. The first one isn't Dragon Mount. That's the prologue. No, I don't remember. Okay, what... so the first one, the wind rises in the mountains of mist. Okay, no, I literally have not. I've oh, told you, don't you this know many times. All. Okay. I have not committed this to any form okay. of memory. Yeah. Well, you fail. Yes. The challenge. I told you that. <laughs> yeah. Doesn't it not feel great to be in the hot seat with something you don't know at all? Yeah, I don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> Who would subject themselves to right. this? Right. Okay, the second book, The Wind Rises in the Mountains of Doom. Okay. The third book, Mountains of Mist again. Okay. A little bit uncreative there. Fourth book, Carlean Grass. Carolyn, yeah, Carolyn Grass. I remember that one now. Okay. Black Hills or something? No. For the next one? No. Oh. Bram Wood. Bram Wood. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Bram Wood. And then the sixth book, A Forest in Kyrian. Nice. And then the seventh book, Bram Wood again. I love it. Okay. And then we really start to start the wind with somewhere and then it moves. Right. So in book eight, the wind rises above the island of Tremalking and moves toward Ebudar. Okay. In book nine, it rises across the Arth Ocean towards Terabon. Sure, sure. In book 10, it rises in the Rhiannon Hills. Yeah. And moves west into the harbor area of Ebudar. Okay. In book 11, that's last book, Night yep. of Dreams, the wind rises high up on Dragon Mount and then rushes down to kill a bunch of people. Okay, that's why I think of Dragon Mount is the most recent. Okay, It was the most recent. Yeah, that is where the wind That's my rose. answer. Sure. And then here we go. The wind rises around the White Tower. I'm starting to think I don't know much about how wind starts or where it forms or why. Yeah. Air currents and low pressure and high pressure. Or I something. feel like those are right. You said it right. Yeah. Those things. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Anyways, weather, white tower. White tower. You weather, say weather. Weather. <laughs> All the weather outside is weather. <laughs> Anyways, it makes the banners flap majestically. Yeah. Now 
we are going to get a lot of wind blowing during this discussion. Okay. And eventually the wind does make its way over to Rand and Aerodomen. Oh, yeah. That's like the cross almost. That's a lot. That's a, that's it a is far way to go. so much. But now we get some recap about Tarvalin and the White Tower before we go meet up with Rand. Yes. Okay. So let's let's do this. Let's do this recap for us. Okay. So it's super beautiful, built by Ogiers and such. Yes. Ogier? What's the plural? I think it's just Ogier. Ogiers. Is the plural. I prefer Ogiers. <laughs> it's like a fish's situation. I know. I like Ogiers better. <laughs> now, we also get a reminder that there's still piles of garbage everywhere. Yes. And thugs are all look- lurking around. Yeah, and that Lurk- is lurking. the siege and rebels' fault. Yeah. For sure, right? Absolutely yeah. it okay. is. All right. Now, the wind blows on over to the South Harbor, where workers are still trying to pull apart the giant Kowendiar chain. Yeah. And recap on that whole situation. Yes, and there are Aes Sedai on duty. If you recall, Elida was like, why isn't anyone working on duty? Where I said no, they I have to... No, I thought it was... Why are only the reds on duty? No, also that, maybe. And this woman is 1,000% red. Red, Yeah. (laughs) Red-fringed shawl. All right. So that is still going on. They're working on it. Yes. Then we get the wind blowing over to the rebel army. Yeah. Where we learn that there are lots of troops there. 50,000. And a recap on that whole situation in case you forgot, because the rebel Amerlin has been captured and is imprisoned in the tower. Right. But the rebels are still there. They're not giving up yeah. yet. You know what this entire section is for me? A recap? No, it's the Star Wars Oh, the words. scrolling dialogue. The intro. Yes. Here's where we are and what's yes. going on mm-hmm. here. Yeah. Yeah, it's I, like set the scene. Read it like that. Well, that's like a Shakespeare thing where it's our like our hero, scene lies. Our hero, the rebel Amarlin Seat, Egwene Alvier, has been captured and imprisoned in the tower. <laughs> like That's exactly how it would read. Yeah, right. I love it. Yeah. And then once we're sort of done with that entire long-winded recap. Yeah, <laughs> long-winded. Oh, good, good one. Good one, me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the wind is going to pass by Dragon Mount. Through the Black Hills, across the Caroline Grass. Yeah, really speeds out. Like, blasts across the country now, basically. Just blasts. Finally, now we're in Aerodomen, and it slams into something unseen and unnatural and gets eaten up by some sort of evil wind. Yeah, it's a dark one, and he likes the taste of good wind and eats it with his evil version of the wind. <laughs> so, that's why Rand is probably shaking his fist at this guy. Uh-huh, yet the wind. Yeah. Of course. Exactly, and the dark one. Because of the wind. Because of the wind. Okay, you get it now. Sure. Yeah. All right. So. Are we done with that? Yeah. <laughs> Are we like good? <laughs> pages, in, 10 minutes in. It's a lot. To the audiobook. And now we're at, with Rand in a manor house in Eridomen, staring at a window, thinking about his hands, but really it's just one hand because, recap, he got his hand blown off. Exactly. Phantom limb situation. It, yes, because he's feeling like he can feel it. But yes. He can't. But it's not. It's not there. Now, he has some very mentally healthy thoughts right. about how he steal, and this can't be fixed, so he has to move on. Although, there are some glimmers of him being a little upset yeah. that he doesn't have a hand. Well, he's trying to shut it down. I know he's That's, trying he's... to shut it down, but it's nice that he's at least not so far gone that he doesn't even have the thoughts to shove down. Sure. You know okay. what I'm saying? Sometimes it kind of seems like he's upset that he doesn't have a hand because he's going to have to learn how to do things differently. Well, yeah, and that's a normal thing to be upset about. But it's like he doesn't have time. It's not so much that he has to, it's, he doesn't have time to relearn things. Yeah. It's like, man, this is inconvenient to my my cause here. Which is true and fair. And as long as he's thinking things and feeling some things. We're then, still good? Okay. Then we're still okay. Okay. He's trying to shove it all down, but. And he keeps going throughout the entire chapter. He's yeah. he's st- he's trying to become more than steel. Yeah. Like that's his whole thing, right? Yeah. So anyway, meets rotting, recap about how everything's oh, going yeah. to shit. <laughs> it's an entire thing. Yeah, he now, can smell it. He's like, oh, the wind. Yeah. Yeah. Now, Min comes up and is like, hey, Rand. And then he's like, 
look at those trees. They're blowing in the wrong direction. And she's like, oh, no, that's not good. Yeah. And he's like, yep, the dark one stirs. Well, it's also funny because, like, in his mind, he's feeling the connection with, like, through Mind and the Bond. And when he says it, he feels a spike of, like, oh, no, from her. Yeah, but is she, alarm. Is she yeah. think is she alarmed because of the wind is being weird or because of, like, her feeling Rand's reaction to, like, saying the wind's weird right now. It's evil. And no, she's like, oh, man. I think man. she does see it. Okay. Because later we get that the soldiers outside. Sure also see the weird wind and they're they're looking at it and trying to ignore it sure everything though in this chapter we have to take with the tiniest grain of salt right because it's from Rand's perspective <laughs> and he's never doing as well as he thinks he's doing never yeah yeah and it gets worse <laughs> it gets worse for him and even at one point he's like oh i'm doing bad yeah <laughs> and so you're like whoa if Rand's acknowledging he's he doing must bad, be bad he must be doing real bad yeah. But no, I think she's like, oh, that wind is really weird. Yeah. Because... We also we also get a recap on his eyeball situation. Oh, yeah. His we eyesight. got a mat situation. Well, yeah, because he got blasted and then he was like, oh, I can't see very well. And now he's like, I can kind of see a little bit better. But it still but sucks. But it's still bad. And at one point, he's so frustrated about it. Yes. Which is, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, be frustrated about that. That right. sucks. But can we not heal that, I guess? Yep. Maybe. Who's to say? Because he got healing. Because remember when, oh, I remember yeah, now. Yeah, Nynaeve was Nynaeve like, I don't want to do like, it. there's something wrong with your eyes, but I don't even want to try because I'm going to make you blind by accident. Right. If, you know, we don't want that to happen. Yeah, it's a delicate thing with eyeballs. Right. And healing. And, and that, that kind of makes sense to me. Like, I get it. It doesn't make sense to me. Well, healing isn't necessarily all magical. You can still kill someone by trying to heal them. You can I still wreck that, something by healing them. I feel like them. Nynaeve should just be able to do it, you know? Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, you know, he also lies. So he's like, I can see fine. When in reality, he can't. No, I don't know if he says I can see fine. I'm pretty sure he said that like back when he got blasted. Like, he was like, yeah, yeah, no, it's fine. Said, it's fine. Yeah. That's different, I think. <laughs> he's not the most honest guy. Well, no. And she can delve him and tell that his eyes aren't fine. What if he doesn't give permission? Well, he doesn't, and she does <laughs> does anyway. it anyways. <laughs> okay, all right. Anyways, we're gonna ignore this. Yeah, so let's, because let's then move we on. also get a recap and an explanation, like a catch you up to speed on what's going on with Rand. Yeah, where he's been, what's going on. Yeah, so, what they're all doing. Fill us in. So there's this manor house, and he's hanging out here. Yes, that's it. Oh yeah. Well, okay. No, that, that's not. He's hanging out in He has a bunch of places lined up, and he's been jumping around all over the place since the Semrog incident, and it's been a couple of weeks, possibly. Yep. It's okay. hard to say. Bashir's soldiers are set up down there below, and Rand's like, I got no time for what I want. It's what I gotta do. It's what I need before Tarman Gaiden. Yeah. So he's getting a lot more urgent in his, like, we gotta get this stuff done. We gotta set the Daughter of the Nine Moons meeting. Yeah. That's and not going so well. And he's feeling frustrated that she hasn't shown up to have a meeting yet. Crazy. Yeah. Yeah. We really thought that was going to happen immediately. Yeah. Well, he did think that. Yeah, but they can't travel. But I guess they have Rakens. That's true. You just take an airplane. And also, like, are, is she ever going to come? Right. Is she going to? Yeah. I guess we'll see. Yeah. Well, because on the flip side, we also kind of know what the Shanshan prophecy about the Dragon Reborn is supposed to be. That he's supposed to kneel to the Empress? Yeah. But the Empress is gone. Yeah. Or like to the Crystal Throne, basically. Yeah. You know? It's a little bit convoluted at this point because yeah. we don't really know. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. there's a whole like he's supposed to kneel. And I think at that point you're like, well, technically he could just like kneel and fulfill the prophecy and be like, here, I'm kneeling in front of you. Good. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You had Like you had he might show that. some respect. Yeah. Yeah. By like bowing or something, something like, to yeah. her. And it'll be like a Matt and Tuon situation where it's like, haha, married. Yeah, one of those old timey like kneeling bow situations that and he did a like, long time ah, ago. Now you're sworn to us. It's yeah. like, what? No. <laughs> gotcha. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Except for them, it's not even a gotcha. Yeah. That's just how things work. Like, they right. wouldn't even see it that way. Yeah. They'd be like, ah, yes, now you've sworn to us. You and can leave like, now. Excuse me? <laughs> <laughs> You're free to go. Yeah. Anyways, good news. Good news. The spooky wind settles down. Yes. So it's no longer eating the good wind. It's it's dispersed, I guess. Okay, and then all the wind starts blowing the same direction yeah. this time. And all the soldiers were spooked up by the spooky wind, but it's not as bad. Like, spooky wind isn't as bad as spooky ghosts, because there have been ghosts. Yeah. But the wind is better, I guess, than ghosts. Than seeing dead people. Right. Yeah. Which makes sense. I, I, I can agree with that. Okay. 
Now, we're going to get some exciting news, and that is Avienda is coming closer to him. Yeah. Okay, that's good, yeah. I guess. Well, it's we- exciting for me. I want to see Avienda. That's true. It's been a while. Yes. The last time we saw her, I think, was when she left Elaine because yes. they were like, hey, we have to go west because that's where we're supposed to go now. Yes, that's right. And she is with Ruark. Okay. This is like a planned meeting, apparently. Yes. Because Rand's like, he's not bonded to Ruark, see? He can't no, feel Ruark but so closer. <laughs> at this point, though, he thinks about the four women yeah. who are bundles of emotion in his head. And then we get the recap on the entire bonding situation yeah. about how he let three women be bonded to him, and then the fourth one did it against his will. Exactly. And where is Alana? Like, we haven't seen her in a minute either. Well, wasn't she somewhere in, like, Tyr? Yeah. She had that side mission of, like, hey, go do this, and then you can rejoin me, and then she, like, she's been gone that yeah, way for a long gone. time. Yeah. Yep. That's it. And then <laughs> Luce Theron is always in the background here. He is. And I'm actually enjoying him. Yeah. I think he's so funny. You know who's not enjoying him? Rand. Rand. Well, Rand would like to be able to have a friendship with him, I think. If he would talk to him properly, but yeah. LTT just called. Because even with the whole women situation, LTT's like, don't forget about Elena. We yeah. killed her, remember? Yeah. And oh, Rand's no, he like, says, I killed her. Oh, yeah, well, yeah. I killed same, her. Same, same. Yeah. <laughs> Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Rand's not allowed to be angsty without Luce Theron. Oh, and Luce Theron is the most. She's the original angster. He's... <laughs> nah? Do you like it? No. Okay. No, I don't. That was really bad. <laughs> I laughed when I wrote that down. Oh, my God. You wrote <laughs> to it myself. down. That wasn't even like a... Oh, that was, that was planned. That was planned. Hey? It was very late at night, and I oh, had all that no. wine. <laughs> See? <laughs> And I was like, this is hilarious. It is pretty good. It would have been better if it was off the top of your head, though. Yeah, not everything Don't tell me to... you plan to say that because it actually makes it even worse. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Okay, so now Rand is thinking about Semarog and what went down with her that day and the things that she said right. about him going crazy. Yeah, do you remember all that? Or the, the the gist of it, at least? I remember a lot of it. She was talking about how men seem to go crazy by hearing a voice in their head. And sometimes they're real, and sometimes they're not. But if they are real, then it's worse. Okay. Or something somehow. Yeah, kind of, sort of. So some of the main points that she was talking about and again we have to take again this with a grain of salt because she's forsaken she might be a liar and Rand thought about that but also ltt's like she doesn't lie yeah anyway no it's almost like she tells the truth as part of psychological torture exactly so she says a lot about how rand is insane and this was back at the meeting after she got captured yeah and she's like hey sometimes people hear voices in their heads and they are voices from past lives. Landfear had claimed that Rand knew things from the Age of Legends, things that only LTT would actually know. So clearly Rand is hearing LTT's voice, and that descent into terminal madness can be abrupt. So Sudden it can happen yeah. very quick, very quick. And then he does mention that Grendel could have explained it better because her That's specialty her area of expertise yeah, is madness and it's just kind of funny because we just got a grendel perspective last chapter mm-hmm. but and even, even at grendel some point soon here right away Rand's gonna be like i wonder if grendel's here right Ooh, maybe we should have a conversation with her yeah Okay. Was he going to like seek her out not to kill her as a Forsaken? Capture but her. to learn about his own madness brain? Okay, so you're all against like kidnapping or, or like taking captive I Forsaken. Am. Yeah. Would you be okay with taking Grendel captive if that means Rand can get some answers? No. Okay. I didn't expect that. I thought you were going to say yes. No, you don't take him captive. Okay. You kill them all. Anyways. Except at this point, <laughs> I kind of like the Forsaken. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm not ultimately rooting against them. Do we even want the good guys to win this? Yeah. See, Semarog, a thousand percent not on board with. Okay. Awful. Terrible. Grendel, I mean, like, yeah, she's awful and terrible, but the problem is she's really entertaining. Ooh. Like, she's a funny character and a fun person to have around, you know, unless you're too attractive and then she's just gonna turn you into, like, a mind-trapped slave. Yeah. Which isn't good. No. Like, com- compelled slave. I know. Not the same as mind trap. I know, but it feels very mind trappy. Like, if I'm going to make up a definition of what mind trap would mind be. Mind trap is more like a soul trap versus like a mind trap. Yeah, this. Compulsion do, is more like a mind trap. Compulsion is a mind trap. Yeah, I get that. I've trapped your mind. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I understand what you're saying. Mm-hmm. Anyways, last little tidbit to recap is that even Grendel wasn't able to achieve in 
quotes reintegration with someone who had heard a real voice and that's the speculation about rand and we don't know if Semirog is lying or like what it means but rand is also a special case because he's the dragon reborn right so that's what rand is kind of ruminating on right now is like oh that's what Semirog said and that's why ltt kind of chimes in with that whole bit about Semirog. right okay yeah but i really like how Luce Theron not only talks about how Semarog isn't lying, but about how she tortured an entire city just to prove herself, and she's killed a thousand men a thousand different ways just to see how their screams would differ from one another. Yes. So, like... If you weren't sure. If you weren't sure (laughs) that she's a bad person to have captive right now. Yeah. This is confirmation of that. And then Rand still is like, I can't can't kill a woman. Don't do it. She's a woman, though. Yeah. Too many women have died. And I was like, you really can't even classify her as that. Yeah. Honestly. Yeah. Like, it's just, nope. I can't really offer anything to disagree with you because, like, I'm on the same page here. And I mean, like, women can do bad stuff and deserve to die, too. Tom said that in, like, I don't know, book two or something? Yeah. Yeah. He gets it. Why can't Rand get it? Because Rand's crazy. Rand's crazy. Rand's crazy, man. Mm -hmm. And it's also just in there to drive me nuts. That's true, too. Okay. I'm not in favor of this entire, like, kill women, too. (laughs) We want equality, okay? Yeah. I'm not saying, I'm not saying, like, only kill women. Sure. Of course not. But, like, equal. If you're going to kill people, make sure you get. If you're killing evil people, kill evil people. Get a healthy mix in there. Yes. Yeah, Yeah. I get it. And yeah, feel bad when yeah. you kill innocent people. Sure. That yes, Rand. Sure. Definitely feel bad about that. Sure. But like She's not innocent. No. And also don't feel bad if somebody willingly goes into battle and dies. Yeah. Shoot. Okay. Yeah. All Especially right. in this book series. What? So many countless people just die. Oh yeah. Well the whole maiden situation. Exactly. It's like, man, like you got okay, like we have to at some point Yep. Yeah, take Elaine's attitude towards it. Just kill him. Is no, that her attitude? Elaine's attitude her is attitude. like, ah, yes, my subjects shall die for me. Oh, yeah. That is their place. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, she's not that cavalier with it, but you know. Yeah, well, except that she was. When she's like, don't worry, I'll be fine. Yeah, exactly. She is, though. <laughs> she's not, but like she is. Yeah. <laughs> okay, back to it. So Min's here and she's like, hey, I can tell you're thinking about her again. Yeah, yeah because it turns out everyone else is on board for torturing yeah, Semarog. like getting information. If we're going to do this. Questioning. Yeah. Yeah. Like if we're going to do this, then like let's get information and we can do the whole conversation about like does torture work and all that stuff, which is generally no. Yeah. But still. And Min's like, you know, she's one of the Forsaken and she would have killed us all. <laughs> and Ron's like, no, not all of us. Yeah. She wasn't going to kill me. She would have just taken me. Yeah. With the dangly male adam it's like that's worse yeah so if we're wondering what the order was because we talked last chapter yes. about the whole moradin ordering semarok to take rand like what were they gonna do well use the adam and then control rand yes and then it's like boom captive and yeah that's that's that would have gone poorly that's, that's bad turns out though the pattern nah pattern's Wasn't like no nah. let that happen well catswin's hair danglies were like nah yeah and we do get a thousand percent recap that that is what happened yes during that meeting yes absolutely so now the thought of having semarog captive brings rand around to thinking about the last time he had a forsaken captured mm-hmm. and that is asmodian yeah and then we get a little bit of a recap that he doesn't know where asmodian went or why Yes. But he thinks that Asmodian must have betrayed him to the other Forsaken. Like all the the stuff they talked about, probably. Yeah. But, I mean, that's some confirmation that Asmodian's killer was not Rand. Well, we already got that confirmation. I know, except if he was, like, super crazy. No, because Rand has had this thought before. Okay. A couple books ago. Yeah. He did think, why did Asmodian run away? Where's that guy? Like, literally exactly this thought. Yeah. He's had it before, and that was me going, oh, okay. Because Rand was on my list. Sure, yeah. Of like maybe. But now I'm thinking maybe. Who is on your list even? Because it's such a, it's a mystery. Yeah, I'm thinking it might be another Forsaken. Okay. Any idea who it would be? Is anyone even on the, like, okay. Yeah. Name some Forsaken. (laughs) Grandel. Okay. Yep. Lanfear. Okay. Now you're just, okay. I meant like name Forsaken you think are like the ones who. Oh no, Lanfear was going through the door with Moraine when that happened. Okay, so not her. Yeah, that. Not Lanfear. Okay. So Grendel. Grendel. Others. Others. Yeah. It's a good list. Morden. 
Sure. Did, was he there at that point? It's hard to say. That was like end of book five. Uh, yeah. So, I would. No, not him. No. Yeah. Maybe somebody, maybe Demandra. Sure. Okay. Yep. Someone who wasn't happy with what he was doing. Yeah. Although the Forsaken aren't really in the business of just like killing each other. Sure. Willy nilly. But I mean, Asmodian had like turned. He turned tables. Yeah, he did. Right. Yeah. That's my only next part. Yeah. Mm hmm. Yep. All right. That's a good list. I like it. Yeah. Okay. It's well thought out. No, it's Well maintained. Not. <laughs> like most of my theories. <laughs> it's good. All right. And then we get Luce Theron in the background being like, well, we should have killed him. We should have killed them all. But was it Luce Theron? That's the question. Mm, well, because it's a rational thought, actually. Well, Rand's like, oh, is that my brain or was that LTT? And, and at maybe this point, we should have like, killed who them. Cares? Yeah. We should have. We should have killed them. Although Asmodian, I really wanted. I wanted that story arc to go a little bit better. Yeah. For Asmodian and Rand. Yeah. Yeah. No, I get that for sure. That all kind of starts in this shouting at LTT because then he's like, hey, come out from where you're hiding because he needs information. This chapter is a lot about Rand wanting information from Luce Theron. Yep. But he's not really getting firm ideas and concepts. He's trying to make a flow chart and stuff for the last battle and LTT is not contributing well, to the team. Well, it's because Luce Theron is giving crumbs and this entire chapter is him just sort of giving some information and then running away and crying. Yeah, so let's talk about some of those crumbs because okay. Rand really wants to know how Luce Theron sealed the Dark One's prison last time. What went wrong? Yeah, and why the prison is flawed. Yeah. That's kind of like a big concept here too because clearly it's got to be flawed in some way because the Dark One's getting out now and like the seals are crumbling and breaking and there's more Dark One influence in the world. So like what went wrong last time and how can Rand fix it? Right, and then he also has another super side thought about how Min had a viewing of Rand and another man melding together, and he wonders if that means Luce Theron and him are like two people forced to share one body. Yeah. And I'm thinking, no. I'm oh, okay. thinking that the ma the two people melding together is actually Rand and Moradin. Oh, interesting. Okay. Because now okay. Moradin is starting to sort of look like Rand and feeling that his like <laughs> left hand is like weird. I think he looked like Rand a little bit beforehand. I don't think so. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Although maybe because it was pretty early on before we even really knew who Moradin was that they crossed bale fires. They did. They touched. Was that the melding? I mean, that was the big instance there. Yeah. That absolutely. was the time. Yeah. That was the connection that was the thing. piece. Yep. Maybe. Don't touch Balefire to each other. All right. So Ran tries to stop thinking about his madness. And also don't think about what Katzman's doing to Samarog. Well, oh my goodness. Questioning her. Yeah. They're just literally trying to get answers out of her. Yeah. Like, Ran still feel, feels bad about all of this, I guess. I don't know. He's having a tough time. Yeah. I don't even think he should be in charge of this. He shouldn't. Like why they're listening to his instructions on this matter in particular mm. feels stupid. Yeah. Like why does he get to call the shots? dragon reborn yeah it's yeah dumb. <laughs> it's like that is, is that and it? he clearly doesn't have the same opinion as everybody else yeah this is kind of like the parents saying no we can't kill masima when everybody wanted like to we kill. should kill like Masima. why are we letting him say the rules here you know what ran needs one of his wives to go and murder oh samurai that's literally what fael did oh right? yeah mm -hmm. yeah yep that's his wife yeah where's avienda coming coming She's get her to do it Oh, Give... she absolutely will. Yeah. Yeah. She's offered to kill people for <laughs> a lane before. She has. For rat, like, she just... For way, way, way less like, I'll just things. Stab him. Can I just stab him? <laughs> Nothing to do with being and forsaken. you know who won't see being stabbed coming? Severog. <laughs> because she's got all these channelers yeah. there, yeah. right? Yeah. So? I like it. Just stab her. Good. Easy. Yeah. Do it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now Rand also tries to focus on the whole viewing about the north and the east must be as one and the west and the south must be as one and blah, blah, blah. And so he's just thinking about that whole entire plan that we yeah. already know about. You got You have to force people into peace whether they want to or not. And that should go well. Yeah, why Because not? loosely defined, he sort of has the east and north, sort of. And well, then, he's got some Borderlanders who are marching. He knows that they're marched into Andor yeah. and are looking for him. Yeah. But he doesn't want to deal with them yet. Yeah. So he sort of has, that's what I'm saying. Like he sort of has the north and sort of the east. Yeah. If you want to define like the southern side of the eastern side of Randland as his and also east and not south. And then the Shanchans sort of have the west, some of it, and sort of the south. It's, like it's very loosely it's defined. So loosey -goosey it's so loosey-goosey around it's, here. It's not great. It's not great. No. It's not. 
But also what I do like is that Rand has heard about Rodel Iteralda's campaign. He's like, hey, that guy's that's doing good doing against... That's doing well. Yeah, he's doing good against the Shanshen. You know, that's that's something. Yep. Yep, it is. <laughs> okay. Okay, and then this is the part where Rand, in the muddle of thoughts that he has, thinks about, oh, Air Domin is in a lot of chaos. Seems like where Grandel would be because... And also, as Modian told me... Oh, yeah. That's where Grandel is. But that was like months ago, so who knows if she's still Which here. Which is mind-boggling to me. That, that was months ago? Only months. Yeah. Yeah. Like several months, but like... Yeah, but we've descended into some serious madness and a bunch of stuff has happened. Right. Like, I feel like... Yeah, a bunch of months. Yeah, is more accurate. Okay, here than like a few months. You know, it's not. It's not that long. It's no, literally but it's like, like long the two-year mark. Enough. Yeah, it's long enough. Okay. 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 Yeah. Anyways, so who knows if she's still here? But like, we know that she is here. Yeah. <laughs> and her is. orders are specifically to stay here and cause chaos for end. But then it also makes sense because this is set up really far away from other Forsaken's power bases, like Ravine was in Camelin yeah, yeah. and, you know, everybody on the south side, like Tyranillion. So this does seem like Grendel. So maybe we get a Grendel meetup here. Who yeah, knows? Maybe. Okay. It's about time, probably. Yeah, why not? It's been a minute, so. Yeah. Now, I think we should take a really quick break at this point and come on back. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so we're back, and here we are with Rand, who hears someone approaching the door, and he spins around, and he reaches for his sword, but he's like, that's going to be stupid because I can't sword fight <laughs> right now. I should do a better job of yeah. automatically reaching for the power. But then we also know that if he reaches for the power, he's just going to like throw up and fall over. There's a whole bunch of bad so, things that are happening here. So yeah. And what's the cause of him going for the sword first? Is it the sickness that he gets so he doesn't want to channel? yeah or is it like that's his instinct. initial instinct training but it's it's kind of messy it's a little bit messy with it's what's all going on a here. disaster yeah but let's talk about this sword here because this is new this is new okay yeah okay i was reading this let's and do I this was like should i know <laughs> what the hell this is yeah when did he get a sword for what like yeah. what is this and why don't i remember this even a little bit yeah and I'm sorry, I didn't answer at the time when you asked me, because you're like, am I supposed to know this? And I was like, mm, yeah. <laughs> I don't remember if you're supposed to know this. Yeah, and I was so, like, okay, well, I don't. I don't know this. Yeah, so uh, this, not your fault. Okay. Not supposed to know this Love right now. Love that, okay. So this is a fun little thing that is new to us. Okay, so Rand, Rand, Rand has, has a, a new sword. <laughs> fancy new sword that is long and slightly curved and has a really fancy bejeweled hilt. Yeah. And most importantly, Rand recognizes it from his life. Well, it's got literally like a dragon painted on it in red and gold. Oh. It's got a dragon on it. Okay. And it looks like it's been specifically designed for Rand, but it's centuries old and it's only recently been uncovered and then it was given to him as a gift yeah, from... by people who didn't really know what it was, but they're like, this this seems like a you thing. Okay. Here you go. So we don't know where it was found. We nope. don't know by whom, and we don't know who gave it to it's Rand. It's very, no, we don't, but it's very, very old. And then Rand thinks it's odd that they would find this like relic of a sword now. And he started wearing it because it feels right to him. And he hasn't told anybody, including men, that he does recognize it, but from his own memories, not loose Theron's. So it's like super convoluted, super weird. Yep. What's up? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. It's so weird. And then we just pass over it. No time for that now. Yeah, because now we're going to have a meeting with Cat Swain and yeah. Nynaeve. Super, super cool. Nynaeve needs to get a hold of herself. Yeah. Anyways. Man, she does a bad job. Well, this is just Nynaeve. Controlling her temper. This is Nynaeve, though. I know. At some point, <laughs> we need to do a better job of controlling that. Do we, though? It's a her thing. I know. You want to change Nynaeve? You no. want to change who she is? No. <laughs> Don't change for anyone, Nynaeve. <laughs> right. <laughs> you are Nynaeve. I know. Okay. That's the problem. Am I allowed to have a sword? No. Oh, okay. All like right. on the wall? Sure. I not will only take it down occasionally. Not in this house. Okay, shoot. But one ah, day. Ah, yes, in our other house. One day. In our other house. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's not what I mean. I mean, there's literal no safe place to have that. Sure. In this house. Shoot. But one day, we'll have a different house 
that might have like an office a or sword like room. a podcasting room. A sword or room. Some sort of room that can have something like that displayed in it. Okay, okay. We don't have that in this house. No, no. So hmm. maybe one day you could have a sword. I like it. Do you want this one? I mean any sword, just so like even having a just dragon. Any would be cool. sword. You know, at this point I'll take any sword. Okay. Well, not right now. <laughs> <laughs> and like not a real one, you know. Ah, but that's what's the point then. Oh, okay, never mind. You can't Anyways. have one. Okay, so let's get back to this. You know, we we can talk about it later. I guess. Okay. Yeah. Whatever. <laughs> all right. So recap: Who are all these people? Do you remember who Catswin is? Yep. Or Olivia? Yep. Or Nynaeve? Yep. Remember her? Yep. Okay. Anyways, did you know that Olivia might be centuries old, but we're not sure if we believe her? Oh, yeah, and also she's going to help Bran die or something, and yep. Min's like, ah, I hate that. Right, yeah. Okay. There's a lot of animosity between the people in this room. Yeah, and then Rand's like, oh, I have no time to think about even living, and then Luce Theron's like, hey, you said we could die. You promised yeah. we were allowed to die. Yes. What's up? Uh-huh. No takesies, backsies. Yeah. We can die. Yeah, because now Rand does think about how Min's only viewing to be wrong oh, yeah. is about <laughs> Moraine. Right. And I go, ha ha, not wrong. Not r- just delayed. Just delayed. <laughs> yeah. Not right yet. Not right yet. Yes. Okay. All right. Okay. Now let's get into this really terrible conversation about what's happening to Samurag and ooh, poor Samurag. Why are we treating her so badly? Yeah. But we got to back up a little bit because- <laughs> Do we? <laughs> okay. Yeah, because Rand is like, okay, what did you learn? Right. You went in, you questioned her. Did she tell you anything? Did she break yet? Did she Did she just share a bunch of information? No. No, Rand. No, she didn't. And then Cadswain is like, it went well enough. And Nynaeve is like, well enough? <laughs> what the it hell It went you horrible. Her? She's terrible. She's awful. She's never going to tell us a single freaking thing. All she says is how she's going to kill all of us. She yeah. doesn't say anything useful. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's like, yeah, what did you think? And we've and, been questioning her for days. It's also like, okay, so you think that Nynaeve is going to be the one who can break Semarog. No, Nynaeve is literally Semarog's like breakfast. I know. Ugh. Before she even starts going. Uh, like geez. Nynaeve is the easiest person to torture. Right. And torment. It's a little, Look at Nynaeve, how agitated she is already. Yeah. 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 She's, Semarog is doing the torturing in this situation. A hundred percent. That's exactly <laughs> what's happening. Yeah. Okay. Core of the issue though, and Katzman brings this up. We kind of hinted at this. She's like, hey, you want results, but we're not allowed to do anything to her. Yeah. And then Rand's like, you can't threaten her, you can't hurt her, don't, no even, torture. don't even raise your voice at her, but just get yeah. information. And then it doesn't help that Luce Theron starts ranting about how they should have died in the box and then it would have been over. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, well, that's the comparison, yeah. like, oh, no torture because we've been tortured, we were in a box. Ah, we should have just died like there. Yeah. yeah, but also, okay, well, you know. Yeah, but you've also never really tortured anyone like Semarog has. Yeah. Like, let's talk about justice. Yeah. I don't know. Kill her. Yes. Executor. Yeah. Well, at some point, Catswain's like, well, let's just hand her over to the White Tower. Yeah. Rand does think, like, no way is Catswain letting Semarog no. out of her hands, though. Like, she's not going to just give her over. So, no, there because, is that. Well, I think that when Catswain is like, just give her over to the White Tower, in her mind, that means give her over to me. Right. With the authority of the as White Tower. The Aes Sedai, who's yeah. like oldest. And best, she get she gets to say. I get to decide what happens to her. She does have hierarchy, and it's we're torturing her to get information, and then killing her. Yeah, you're right. Executing. You're right. And yep. so, but then Rand shoots back and is like, "Which tower, Elida's or Egwene's?" <laughs> yeah. Okay, this is actually pretty controversial. So, like, I want to hear super controversial. I want to hear your opinion about like. Okay, so Rand says some things about Egwene. Yes. May or may not be accurate or I true. I don't know why he's. Like this. Well, what was the last real they, interaction they had together that he's so sure that she's like the literal worst? There was a lot of like her with the wise ones, and like she didn't, they weren't very nice to each other way back. I know at that. that. Point. And then now the fact that she's Amerlin, so it's like she's Aes Sedai to the core. She'll have me captured. She'll force me to kneel and gentle me. But also, like, is he wrong though? Because he mentions, like, hey, she is Aes Sedai to her core, 
and taking me would be another notch in her belt. So like we can be upset about how harsh he's being, but I don't know that he's necessarily wrong about Egwene's personality. I think personality. in theory, that's what Egwene would say she would do. Sure. Sure. And I mean, in this scenario right now, we know that Egwene is not in any position to make any sort of calls about anything. No, but Egwene as Amerlin, she is Aes Sedai to her core, like that she represents the White Tower. I know, but then you have like one conversation with the guy. Yeah. And she'd be fine. Okay. You know? All right. I'd think. I'd Th- hope. Th- I mean, that's the question. Rand clearly doesn't think so. Uh-huh. Or he's just doing it to poke, poke, poke. No, he doesn't do things to poke. Well, Okay. Not really. Not this. Yeah, not the same way like Cadswin would no, do it. No, he's just literally saying what he's thinking. Yeah, that's what he does. Okay, and it just happens to piss off Nynaeve. Okay, so you think not an accurate, accurate representation of what Ni- what Egwene would do? That my immediate thought was like no. Okay, but I don't know. <laughs> Are you questioning it now? Like kind of. Yeah. I think that if we had Elaine and Nynaeve and Avienda having like a precursor meeting with Egwene. About things that are going on. Yeah. She might be more reasonable in accepting Rand and not, you okay. know, doing the I said I thing. Like we've seen how Egwene treats I know, like Nynaeve, for But at for the example. same time, if Egwene has any sort of viewpoint on how other I said I are treating Rand. Yeah. Right? So we have an entire faction of Aes Sedai who have either sworn to Rand or they're working with him because they're bonded to Ashaman. Yeah. Right? And they're all working with him and they're all doing like a good job, like yeah. all hanging out rel- relatively in good standing with each other. Yeah. Egwene has had some thoughts though. We've seen her thinking Rand has his head up his butt a lot. Yeah. But like, like, oh, the audacity you know of else, Rand. Yeah. You know who else has their head up their butt? Egwene? Yeah, but she doesn't think that. It's Egwene. She doesn't think she has her head, no, own head up her butt. No, but Rand thinks that Egwene has her head up her butt. Well, and they both do for a lot of the series. So. Yes. <laughs> Accurate. Yeah. So I guess we'll see. Okay. All right. I like it. That's a, I yeah. feel like there is going to be an ultimate showdown, an ultimate meeting. Of well, there is that. Isn't there like the whole Dragon Reborn will face the Amaralyn and know her wrath? Wasn't that like a literal... Is that a prophecy? Is that a thing? Yeah. Is that like a thing someone said? Yeah. I think it was Failane. That was like one of the things. It's like, oh... I don't know. The Dragon Reborn will face the Amaralyn Sea. And then Elida's like, yeah, he's going to face me and know my wrath. Is Failane the one who kept having all the... Fa- no, that's Nicola, who kept having all of the... It's uh, yeah, no, it's okay. Yeah, yeah. Anyways, uh, but... make me a sandwich. <laughs> you will. <laughs> I prophesize you will make me a sandwich. <laughs> yeah, it's gotta come true. <laughs> I'm so good at foretelling. <laughs> anyway, I like. I guess we'll see. Okay. Yeah, we'll have a meeting though. Yeah, yeah. showdown. You said showdown. Showdown. Yeah, I'm sticking to showdown. Sh- we'll have a hoedown showdown. Hoedown showdown. All right, rootin' tootin'. <laughs> That's Miley Cyrus. Is it? That's Hannah Montana. Yeah. Okay. The Hoedown Showdown. Yeah. Hoedown Throwdown, maybe, it's actually called? Hoedown Throwdown is good. That's good, too. Yeah, it's the Hoedown Throwdown. That is what that is. Okay. I knew the dance to that once. Cool. All right. LTT's not done yet. Oh, good. More breadcrumbs. Right. Because this is where Luce Theron starts rambling again about how they need to stay away from all of them, all the Aes Sedai, because they refuse to help. They yeah. refused. They yep. said, my plan was too reckless. They left me with only 100 companions and no women to even form a circle. This is all actually their fault. I agree. And then yeah. disappears forever crying. Like right. he won't even say anything else. And Rand's like, talk to me. Well, and this is the big thing because he, he wants the answers to He's these like, very important questions. wait a minute. What are you talking about? What was your plan? Why was it reckless? Why wouldn't they help you? Yeah, like give me all those answers because Rand needs to do something. We have to have some sort of last battle showdown with or without or against the Dark One and or Morden, like what's right? actually happening yes, here. Yeah. Rand's trying to figure out what the whole thing has to be looking like. And that's when Rand shouts out loud, tell me, burn you Kinslayer, speak to me. And everyone just <laughs> stares at him. Everyone's like, like, okay. Oh. And Rand's like, oh shit. No, no. And, and then he tries to run his hand through his hair like a cool guy, but he doesn't have a hand. Yeah, oh. so it doesn't do anything. <laughs> that's so oh, embarrassing. Yeah, I hate that. Oh. Okay. Anyways, and we get one more really important little tidbit here, too, because Rand obviously thinks like, oh, I've never shouted out loud in front of people before like this. And it's like, maybe you have definitely went on like insane ramblings and laughing and crying kind of situation. So this isn't totally new. Yeah, but Rand thinks it was supposed to get better when I cleansed Sidene. I was supposed to be safe. Yeah. 
And Lucerne is like, no, you're already crazy. You can't turn back from that now. Yeah, so that's like kind of a little bit of an answer to the whole like what happens. Yeah. It's you're not cured. It's just you're mad already, so you don't get better. But yeah, at least not quickly. (laughs) Right. I'm wondering if there's like a healing for that. What do you mean? Like a healing for the like madness, like healing the brain from the crazy. Okay. All right. You know? Yeah. Like a mental health yeah healing like some sort of <laughs> healing <laughs> some kind of healing yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah i get it okay let, let naive try yeah yeah i'm just trying to think like what are you what are you healing like it's not the brain okay yeah if it's anything like the eyeballs <laughs> <laughs> it's not his brain's already so messed up <laughs> oh man you okay. can't make it worse at this point yeah okay that's that's cool too i like that Anyways, now it gets actually pretty sad because now Rand has to think about his body's withering away and his eyes are damaged and his hand's gone and his side wound, his side wound is killing him. And he's like, if I if I don't hurry to the last battle, there'll be nothing left of me for the Dark One to kill. Aww. It's like so And sad. then he's like, but I can't cry now. And so this is like, he does have emotions and he at, is feeling things. But then he shoves but then it he down. Shoves down and shoves he's it like, down. ugh, Luce Darren is crying enough for the both of us right now. Seriously. That guy never stops crying. Yeah. That guy's yeah. the opposite of steel. Yeah. Hopefully with all his like dragon reborn money, he can just like buy a new hand and new eyeballs and Well, no. We already know? talked about how this actually isn't this is, Star Wars. This is not you don't get a, ro- it, a robotic we hand. Like it was Star Wars, but, <laughs> but we don't end like that. We don't get a robot don't hand. Don't get a robot hand. A robot eye. Don't get that. Yeah. Just the, the torso no, area. No, and eventually Mac got his sight back. Remember? That was different. That was a lightning strike. That's basically from Rand. The, yeah, but that's what that's what's happening here. Yeah, okay. It's like the blind, the blindness from all the light. Yeah, okay. And he had to like wear the scarf over his face like a weirdo for a long time. Probably too and long. And then eventually yeah. his eyes were fine. Yeah. So this, that's, I'm not worried about What's his he eyes. even complaining about? Gosh. What does Rand even have to see anyway? Seriously, not important. Yeah. Got other people doing the looking for him. Yeah. So I think at this point, other people need to step in and take control of this Samarag situation. Sure. Because this is bound to go very poorly. Okay. Yeah. And on a time scale of quickly to drag. Well, I think at this out, point, yeah. the last battle, like, I think that the last three books are literally going to be like three weeks long. <laughs> That's not good, though, because, like, how pregnant is Elaine? Oh, yeah. She's and if she's going to have, gonna have uh, babies on the okay. Dragon Mount okay. slopes, each and then... book will be like. A couple months. Okay. All right. Yeah. Phew. <laughs> <laughs> Forgot about that. <laughs> that was one of your Forgot predictions. I predicted that. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta stick with it, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, I guess she technically could survive the last battle and have her babies after the last battle. Sure, sure. Or, you know, uh, channeling, uh, speed it up. There you go. Speed, speed up, up that pregnancy? baby making. Yeah. Mm. Bing, bang, boom. I mean, like, if we're not touching eyes, we're probably not touching fetuses. Well, not with that attitude. Okay. I'm going to go with no. Okay. And let's keep reading. <laughs> okay. Let's keep I, going. I like it. All right. Good start. Strong. Let's get the ball rolling We've got some here. real crazy stuff happening. Yeah. I'm medium for most of the things that are going on. As you should be. So let's keep going. Let's do it. Next okay. week, chapter two. Yep. Here we go. Okay. Sounds good. Well, before you go ahead and just let everyone know just exactly how crazy you are, I'm going to say that this is part of the pattern now. Yeah. It's part of the pattern. Well, that's the end of another fun episode. Thanks so much for listening, everyone. The Wheel Weaves is hosted and edited by Danny and Brett and produced by Danny and Brett with Passion Socks, Cody Feltz, Benjamin, Jamie Young, Megan, Jared Berg, Ricky Morissette, Adam, Mozyme, Marta Thier, Michelle Forbes, MKM, Antoine Benoit, Lawrence Bradley, Colby T, and Gabby Young with music by Audionautics. Be sure to check out our Patreon page if you're interested in supporting us on the podcast. We'd love to send you some Patreon-exclusive merchandise as a thank you. Plus, you'll gain access to our episodes earlier than everyone else. And at the time of recording, we have over 45 bonus episodes for your listening pleasure. Find all that and more at patreon.com slash the wheel weaves podcast. For general information about our show and information like how to send us shot glasses, how to join the discord, or how to get in touch with us, visit the wheel weaves podcast.com. And as always, please be sure to give us a five star review because it really does make a really huge difference in helping other people find us. And Tell a friend, Riyadh, because referrals really are the best compliment. Thanks so much for listening. This really is part of the pattern now.